Uh, this is uh, Galarkin Rom. And I want to tell you today's our speaker is uh, Tomas Chacon Rebolo from University of Seville. And Tomas, welcome. Thanks for your participation. And the floor, the floor is yours. And please just go ahead. Okay, so thank you very much, Birgun. So let me at first thank also the, the organizers, Maria Stratzulo, Giovanni Stabile, Trajan Iliusko, and yourself, Birgun. So let me share my screen if I am able to. Okay. Okay, so I guess you you see my my screen. Yes. Okay, good. So I'm going to talk about uh, several techniques to stabilize the discretization of the pressure in reduce order modeling of incompressible fluids. And if I have time, I will talk also about uh, some strategies to uh, deal with uh, reduced basis approximations of uh, turbulent flows with LES techniques. So this is the overview of, of the talk. So at first, I will talk a little bit about general techniques uh, and the issue, if you want, of stabilizing the pressure for reduced order models. And then I will talk about uh, three different techniques to do it, okay, points two, three, and four. And then finally, I will talk about this subject, which is really not within the pressure stabilization subject, but which is a nice thing that uh, we have found in the last time and I would like to share with you. Okay, so let's start. Sorry. Oh, there is a big mistake. I don't know how to deal with this. Sorry. Okay, excuse me, but I'm not accustomed to use this. Uh, oh, sorry, times. Okay, let me let me try again. Okay, good. Sorry. So we are interested in solving the Navier-Stokes equations for incompressible flows. Okay, so the unknowns are the <clears throat> velocity and the pressure. Okay, so we have in here the equations, which are balance of uh, kinetic momentum, balance of mass. Okay, so we assume that the density is constant. So we assume for simplicity, Dirichlet boundary conditions plus an initial condition. Okay, so we assume that we have a standard discretization, discretization say by finite elements. And we call that discretization the full order model. Okay. So we test by uh, test functions, VH and QH. So we have the Galerkin standard discretization of the problem. Okay. And one of the ways to deal with the pressure in this full order model is to consider mixed approximations in which the velocity space and the pressure space are stable. In the sense that uh, this discrete in subcondition is, is satisfied. Okay, so the point is that the duality is pressure divergence of the velocity appear in the momentum conservation equation. So once you have bounded the velocity by taking free divergence uh, velocities, okay, you are able to bound through this in subcondition the L2 norm of the pressure. Okay. So this is a standard way to deal with this incompressibility restriction to stabilize the discretization of the pressure, okay? So now if we go to the reduced order model, <coughs> formally we have the same formulation. The, the difference is that we change the full order spaces to the reduced spaces for uh, velocity and pressure. Normally, uh, I mean, what we want really to, uh, to get is a pair of spaces that approximates the varieties formed by, in this case, I assume that our only interesting parameter is time, okay? So we consider all the <laughs> snapshots of, uh, in velocity and in time, and we have to build reduced velocity and pressure spaces in such a way that this variety of velocities and pressures is well approximated by com linear combinations of, of basis functions here and in here for the pressure, okay? And what concerns the discretization, as I say, simply by the Galerkin method. But there is a point is that this in subcondition 
in the full order method that ensures the stabilization of the discretization of the pressure is not automatically ensured for any kind of couple of spaces for reduced velocity and reduced pressure, okay? I mean, eventually you can eliminate the pressure because all your velocities are divergence free because of the full order discretization. But you can, if you want, if you want to compute the, the pressure, you need to enrich the velocity space, okay? So uh, a very standard way to build those two reduced spaces, let me speak a little bit about the basics, okay? Is to use the proper orthogonal decomposition. So you start from a number of velocity snapshots, normally the uh, full order velocity at some times that should be preset, okay? And then by the uh, proper orthogonal decomposition, you find the space of order that you give, okay? That provides the best approximation of this space span but by all the snapshots, okay? In the discrete norm L2, but with respect to the parameter, in this case would be the, the number one to N, okay? And H would be the space in which leave each one of the snapshots that can be for Navier-Stokes either L2 or H1 or even H10 if we have boundary directly boundary conditions, homogeneous directly boundary conditions, okay? So the nice thing is that among all the uh, spaces of dimension R that can be spanned with those functions, okay, you get the one that reproduces the best, okay, that approximates the best, this one, okay? And there is an error estimate between all the snapshots and the uh, orthogonal projection, okay, of uh, any function here onto this space, okay, in this parametric node, which is the sum of the lacking eigenvalues, okay, from R plus one to the final one, okay, uh, R is the dimension of the reduced space, okay? So we have an error estimate. So if we want really to, to get an error estimate for the reduced uh, uh, problem, it should be in terms of those eigenvalues, okay? Because these eigenvalues at the end give us the error that we make, make by interpolating in this case, by projecting our solution, okay? So, okay, so as I said, there are no reasons, okay, for the reduced space to satisfy the, disc the discrete in subcondition, okay? In particular, uh, because all the, all the uh, velocity spaces are free divergence. I mean, not fully free divergence, but their duality with the full order pressures are zero, okay? So the point is that we have to enrich the velocity space in order to get a stable uh, discretization of the pressure, okay? So uh, there is a today, let's say, standard way to overcome this difficulty is to enrich this velocity space so we get the gradient of the, of the reduced uh, pressure space, okay? And we build its representation by the RIS, the RIS representation by using, in this case, the H10 inner product of, as I say, the gradient of the discrete uh, pressure on the uh, finite element space, okay? So we solve this problem, which is a problem which we have the rigidity, mat the rigidity matrix gradient gradient, which search for a solution in the full order space, the finite element space, okay? And on, on the right-hand side, we have the duality gradient of the pressure times uh, the test function velocity. This is simply minus QS times the divergence as we are uh, velocity functions that vanish at the boundary, okay? So we, I say, we, I say we enrich the velocity space with the inverse risk representatives of the pressure gradients. So you can look at this uh, CS as a supremizer of this normalized duality. You see, this is a duality between the gradient of the this reduced pressure times the uh, finite element function VH, okay, divided by its uh, H10 node, okay. So. I mean, it is uh, simple to prove that the per spaces, the enriched space, which is the original reduced one, coming from the POD analysis, for instance, plus the supremisers, okay, together with the reduced pressure space that we have provided also from a POD analysis, okay, so the, this pair of enriched space plus 
pressure space really satisfy the, the uh, in subcondition, okay? And then you have a reduced problem in which you have a, a, a stabilized uh, discretization of the pressure. This was introduced by Rod Sanderoy in 2007, okay? And this is the standard way today to stabilize the discretization of the pressure in galeric approximations of incompress incompressible flow problems. Okay, so uh, there is uh, another possibility, as I mentioned before, is to consider at first simply the velocity problem because the dualities between the divergence of the reduced velocities with the reduced pressures vanishes, okay? So in this case, the velocity decouples, and you can see here, I mean, it is hidden, but there is one dynamical system for each component of the reduced velocity that can be solved by standard techniques, okay? And once you get the velocity, you can uh, recover the pressure, okay? In the second step. So now to recover the pressure, you need to set an equation for the pressure as solve it, but try, I mean, the important thing is also to solve it on a reduced space with a small dimension, okay? So to obtain the pressure equation, you can write in this way, the Navier-Stokes equation, so, I mean, once you know U, this right-hand side is known and you have to compute the pressure gradient, okay? So to do that, one way is to take in here, the duality with some velocity functions, okay? So this is the Galerkin problem that uh, results uh, when we get uh, test functions like phi up, okay? And we get them as, elements of this enriched reduced velocity space, okay? Actually, only the supremizers are needed because the dualities of the reduced pressures with the preceding velocity, reduced velocities is zero, okay? So this gives a well-posed problem for the pressure thanks to the uh, reduced, uh, to the in condition that also holds now between the spaces QA and XH prime, right? Because these phi R's are the supremizers of the, of the reduced pressures, okay? And then you not only can stably, stably, if you want stably, <laughs> recover the pressure, but you can get L2 with respect to the parameter and big L2, uh, L2 of omega, error estimates for the, the reduced pressure with respect to the uh, full order pressure, okay? And this technique was introduced not very long time ago by King uh, Schneier, okay? That you can find in this uh, reference. Okay, so now there is another way to recover the pressure. So let me remember the equation of the pressure, this one, okay? And instead of multiplying it by uh, velocity functions, we multiply it by pressure gradient, but, but by reduced pressure gradients, okay? And uh, in here, we have written the problem affected by some uh, stabilization parameters that take place really helps to, to make the analysis. But in practice, you don't solve this, you don't, you solve this equals to this everywhere in this space, okay? So but we have tested with, with the stabilized parameters that just to be able to perform the analysis because there is a balance in here between uh, as you see in here, convection, diffusion, and also pressure gradients that uh, should be taken into account in the analysis, in the numerical analysis, through these uh, stabilized coefficients that should be of order HK squared, okay? So what is interesting in this equation is that assuming that it is verified by continuous functions, okay, that PR is a C infinity, say, function if you want, and you get in here C infinity test functions, and really this equation is satisfied, by integration by parts, you can recover the boundary condition for the pressure, okay? From here, you get the normal derivative, and in here, what you get is the normal projection of the operator, okay? So it is nice because you recover really a natural boundary condition for the pressure, okay? So we can prove, this is a work with uh, Cyril Allery, Murad Ulgelu, and Samuel Rubino, okay, that, uh, this uh, this uh, this is a stable recovery of the pressure, and we can bound we can bound the pressure in an adapted uh, norm, which is this one. Okay, so locally on each element, you have the gradient of the pressure, 
you scale it by hk, the, the diameter element squared, you sum and you get an L2 kind norm, okay? Uh, there is a point also is that the, the convection in here for the velocity, the convection velocity should be truncated in two dimensions to some truncated velocity with that grows at most like HK minus, HK minus one, really to be able to recover this bound and the bound for this pressure, okay? In 2D, we don't need it, okay? So uh, these are the results for three uh, different times for Reynolds 200, okay? Which uh, are very, very reasonable. Uh, this is the history of uh, the velocity and pressure contribution depending on the order of truncation in terms of this RU and RP. Let me tell you what it is. Is the remaining energy, okay? So this is the number of retained eigenvalues. This is the total number of eigenvalues. And this, this RU is the ratio, if you want, if you want of retained energy, in this case for velocity, and we can have it also for pressure, okay? So this is the amount of energy kept by the reduced order model, but measured in terms of this R, okay, of this RU or RP, as the truncation order increases. So in this case, for 30, okay, uh, basis functions in velocity, we have, I mean, kept, I mean, we have left less than 10 to the minus 10 energy, okay? And for 30 uh, pressure patient functions, we have less about 10 to the minus 13 uh, energy in, in ratio, okay? So in here we can compare, we compare uh, the lift, okay, uh, coefficient, okay, as this ratio uh, increases, okay? So we see that when the ratio is, is smaller than 10 to the minus four, really we very closely recover the, the full order solution, okay? So at the end, as can be expected, whenever you have uh, enough richness, okay? Richness in your uh, reduced order model, you really recover a good accuracy. What is also uh, expected by the, by the estimators that I, have, I haven't shown the estimators, but anyhow in here, I show the comparison between uh, the estimator, this, in this case for velocity, which are those uh, blue knots, okay, uh, and the true error, okay. In, in here we have uh, the the error represented also with respect to this energy ratio, okay. So we really, uh, sorry, this is estimation and this is a true error, okay. So really the estimation is a bound of the error and it is, I mean, nearly the same rate as R U increases, okay? And this is for velocity in L2 norm, and this is for pressure in H1 seminar, which is the seminar that I have shown on before, okay? In here, I mean, for R U, not very small, you can see that the behavior of the true error, I mean, really is reflected by the estimator. This is lost whenever it is very small. And we think that this is because if you look at the uh, method, okay, in here you have, Laplacian times pressure gradient. So we are probably losing uh, precision due to quadrature formulas or perhaps to the jump of the Laplacian across boundary interfaces, okay? So this is a point that uh, we have still to, to improve. But anyhow, we arrive to very small error rates, okay? 10 to the minus four for pressure and in here 10 to the minus eight for velocity. Okay, so let me go now to a different uh, stabilization procedure, okay, uh, that we have applied uh, to the Smagorinsky turbulence model, okay? So the Smagorinsky turbulence model actually indeed is a discrete, essentially discrete model, uh, although I have written it in here as a continuous one, okay? That models it's the subgrid turbulence effects through an eddy viscosity, which is the new, this new T of uh, in this case, UH prime is the part of the velocity, the, the filtered part of the velocity. So what we do is to decompose the velocity as some kind of projection on the grid, okay, on the finite element grid, plus some fluctuation. And we retain on, only here the fluctuation. To, to compute the fluctuation, go, we uh, subtract to the identity, the projection on the finite element grid, okay? And we let act 
the eddy viscosity only to the fluctuating part. So in this way, we avoid to damp the large scales of the flow and the eddy viscosity only acts on those resolved small scale part, okay? So the structure of the eddy viscosity is coming from the Kolmogorov of uh, theory of uh, turbulence in, in uh, turbulence in statistical equilibrium. So it is proportional to the modulus of the gradient of the velocity scale by this is some kind of uh, mixing length. Okay, the mixing length is identified or proportional to the grid size times a constant which is intended to be universal, but in practice anyone put uh, his value. Okay. So this is a variational formulation, the Galerkin formulation with some modifications, okay, of this uh, Smagorinsky turbulence model. So we have time derivative, uh, dynamics, and dynamic variation in time, convection, diffusion, pressure gradient, and eddy viscosity terms. So each one contributes to this uh, variational formulation where we take the Reynolds number as the parameter, okay? So there is a part of convection, diffusion, uh, eddy turbulence, and we add two stabilizing pressures. What well, this is coming, sorry, from the divergence, and we add a stabilizing uh, technique for the pressure. Okay, so as I say, this is the diffusion one. This is the one coming from the, the divergence restriction, the pressure gradient. This one is coming from the convection. This one is coming from the eddy viscosity. So in here you have the filtering operator. It's at the identity minus this projection operator on the on the finite element grid. It should be on, sorry, I didn't say it before, on a coarser finite element grid, okay, in order not to have zero. Okay. So we kept the small scales uh, of the resolved velocity, which on which acts the eddy viscosity. So this is the additional term that we are considering. Okay. This is a stabilizing term for the pressure discretization, which is the pressure gradient in here for the unknown and the pressure gradient, I mean, the pressure uh, test function Q, okay? But we do not consider the full gradient, but only also the filter or the fluctuation part of the, of the pressure gradient. The idea is that, I mean, if we get to the, uh, to this part of the, of the variational formulation in here, you have the integral of the divergence of, of the test velocity times the pressure. So you can write this as minus, V times the gradient of the pressure. So this means that the L2 projection of the pressure gradient is automatically bounded by your uh, Galerkin formulation, okay? So what we get in here is what lacks, okay? So to the full pressure gradient, we uh, subtract its projection or more in general, interpolation on the uh, finite element space, essentially. So we are bounding through this term and this, and this term, the full pressure gradient, essentially in an L2 node, okay? Uh, so as I said before, the stabilizing parameter should be of order HSK squared. This is uh, coming from dimensional analysis, okay? Uh, so the nice thing is that using this pressure stabilization, stabilizing term, you can prove that there is an if sub condition. Uh, I mean, you, uh, yes, in this case, sorry, uh, we have a pressure which is this part is coming from, or can be can be bounded from the uh, interaction divergence of the pressure times, uh, sorry, divergence of the of the velocity test functions times the pressure. Okay, in here, and this part is right bounded by this stabilizing term. Okay, and then then you can prove that the sum of both is a norm on the uh, velocity space. Okay, this is for the full order method, huh? equivalent to the L2 of omega naught. Okay, so in this way, for this uh, variation of formulation, we don't need the pair of spaces, uh, velocity, pressure, to satisfy the sub condition. I mean, the the how to say that the the uh, scales of the pressure gradient that uh, that are not bounded by the Galerkin formulation are bounded by the stabilizing term. Okay. So, and uh, in this way, we we in the sense that we don't need to add enriching, uh, we don't need to enrich the velocity space with additional de degrees of freedom to bound the velocity, the pressure discretization. So it is a method which is less costly from a computational point of view, but for which the, the, or the, the error estimates, estimators are 
of the same order as if we had used uh, uh, a mixed method. Okay. So now we go to the construction of the uh, reduce uh, problem. Okay. So we use the a greedy algorithm. I guess that most of you know it, but uh, anyhow, uh, I think it is worth to remember a little bit how it is built. Okay. So you consider a number of parameters. In, in, in this case, we consider as parameter uh, a certain uh, interval of Reynolds numbers. We are interested to, to build a reduced order of, for the solution of the problem for Reynolds numbers in this parameter in a fast way. So we subdivide this, uh, uh, para this set into a number of uh, values, okay, which should be large. We don't know how much really, okay. We choose, uh, in principle, randomly a value and build our initial uh, reduced space with this paired velocity and pressure that I call big UH, corresponding to the solution of the full order method for this value, okay? So now if we assume that we have a current reduced space, uh, we solve on this reduced space all the, for all the values of the train parameters, okay? The solution, the reduced solution, and the, we test the error corresponding to the full order solution. And then we get the value in which this error is the maximum, okay? So we are trying to, to minimize the L infinity norm, okay? With values, L infinity with respect to the parameter and with values in this uh, product space for velocity and pressure. And then we go from the preceding uh, reduced space to the new one by enriching the preceding one with the now the high fidelity of the full order solution for this new parameter. Okay, if uh, we this in this case we are considering I forgot to say it the steady problem. Okay, uh, in here in this formulation, but if we have also uh, an unsteady problem, okay, so we need to further re reduce right? because in here the uh of R n will have a number of snapshots in time, and then we perform for instance a POD reduction of. Uh, this set to have uh, a small uh, and a space with most small uh, dimension. Okay, so as I said, what we are doing with a greedy algorithm is to minimize the distance in L infinity with respect to the parameters uh, with uh, values in our space in which the the unknown lives. This is a velocity pressure spaces. Okay, so once we have this reduced space which is uh, a product of a velocity and a pressure space, we build the reduced base width problem, which has the same structure as the full order problem, okay? Uh, in which, as you see, we also add a stabilizing term for the uh, pressure. So it is exactly the same problem, the same structure. And the only difference is that we replace the full order spaces by those reduce order spaces. What there is also a slight difference is that if you want even to, to go further in your uh, reduce problem to, I mean, to reduce the computing times, you can make an approximation of the eddy viscosity by some techniques like the empirical interpolation method, okay? So there is a nice thing also is that not for any cases, but for any, for some choices of the full order uh, for the finite element spaces and this filtering operator, okay? The sum of these, uh, I mean, the, the, the supremum of the, this uh, quotient plus the additional term that we have added now to the reduced order model, this is a norm, okay? On the reduced pressure space, okay? We cannot prove that it is equivalent to the L2, but we can prove that it is uh, uh, bounded from above by the L2 norm, okay? And then we get a reduced problem, which also is in which also the discretization of the pressure is stable. Okay. So this has been just quite recently published in, on applied numerical mathematics. This is a collaboration with Enrique Delgado and Macarena Gomez. Okay. So uh, we have built a reduced basis uh, approximation. Okay. Uh, the point is that I have forgotten to say that. Sorry. When you perform this uh, greedy algorithm, in principle, you have to compute the error between the reduced solution and the full order solution. The problem is that to compute the exact error, you need to compute 
the exact solution. And really what you want to avoid is to compute the exact solution. So the way to, to do it in practice is to replace this exact error by some error estimate, okay? So to build the error estimate, we use the Bretzi rapar aviar theory of approximations of branches of non-singular solutions of nonlinear problems, okay? So the key point to apply this theory is to estimate uh, the Lipschitz continuity of the tangent operator, okay? A in here is the Smagolinsky uh, operator, and this is its derivative with respect to the unknown velocity pressure, okay? So we prove that it is locally Lipschitz, okay? So you can bound the variation with respect to this unknown in terms of a Lipschitz constant times the, the difference between both X in here is H1 times L2, times the uh, norms of the test functions, okay? So with this ingredient, we, we can prove an error estimate, okay? The uh, high fidelity or the finite element solution minus the reduced order solutions in, term of the, in terms of the error estimator. The error estimators you, need, you see in here depends on, on one side, the dual norm of the residual, which is, uh, increased by this Lipschitz constant and divided by the, this is the coercivity constant also of the of the uh, tangent operator, okay? And so we have essentially here, this is proportional essentially to twice this, the norm of Tn, which is at the end proportional to the norm of the residual, okay? And there is a, an amplification factor, okay? Which is in here, as I said, the coercivity constant of the tangent operator, and this is the Lipschitz constant of the tangent operator, okay? So this is an upper bound, and there is also a lower bound with some, of course, coefficient, which the, the point is that normally uh, the efficiency, say the, the, the question between one, the coefficient one, and this one is about several hundred, even thousand, okay? So it is then not a very fine bound. So in here, we apply it to 2D problem solved with the Spagorinsky turbulence model, okay? So, I mean, this is uh, somehow a stupid picture because it is very hard to see that there are no difference. We should look between the, the uh, full order solution and the reduced solution. In here, we can see that there is a slight difference in the minimum, okay? But they are really very close. So we have considered a Reynolds range between 1,000 and 5,100. We consider a non-stable pair of finite and velocity P2 and the pressure P2 with this, uh, a local projection stabilization that I have shown, okay? And we have this grid. Oh, okay. So in here, we have compared the behavior of the greedy algorithm without on the left and with the supremacy, okay? So in here, the, the blue line is the this residual norm with uh, this scaling factor, tau n, and on the red line, we have the error estimator, okay? So we have very similar behavior, okay? They, they more or less behave in the same way. Uh, you can compare here the true error, which is this green line dotted line in both cases, and the estimator, which is in, in blue, okay? So I mean, the efficiency would, would be the quotient between uh, what is the actual value of the, of the error estimator divided by uh, the true error is between 10 to the two or to the four, uh, to the three, sorry. Uh, but the point is normally they are somehow parallel lines, okay? So the, the quotient between both is not constant, but it's not far from a constant. So using the error estimator to build the greedy algorithm is a good technique to choose the best, okay? Approximation in the sense that we, we are enriching the most our reduced order uh, our reduced uh, spaces by choosing uh, the value of the parameter that provides the larger error, okay? So here we compare with or without uh, uh, supremacies, uh, the errors in pressure and in velocity, and we see that they are very similar. I mean, what is on the X axis is the number of elements in the reduced basis, okay? What we win, with the, the without using supremizer is that the speed up is larger okay so in here 
we have the speed up that we obtain uh, in, with the method uh, LPS, local projection stabilization without supremizers. And here is the speed up that we obtain uh, with the supremizer. So we improve further, we get a further improvement of the speed up. Okay. And if you can compare the error levels, okay, this is the H1 norm and this is the L2 norm. And they are very close comparing with or without supremizers. Okay. So uh, let me finish with this uh, additional subject, which is uh, uh, the construction of uh, an error indicator to solve this same uh, Smagorinsky turbulence model, but which is based upon the Kolmogorov uh, theory for energy, uh, for turbulence in statistical equilibrium. So the point is that uh, from that uh, theory, okay, we have in here represented the energy spectrum of the velocity field for uh, a turbulent flow with the well-developed and a turbulence in a statistical equilibrium. So this theory states that in the inertial range where only inertial effects takes place, not viscous effects, not effects related to the large scales, the energy spectrum should uh, behave like uh, the wavelength to the power minus five thirds time a parameter that should depend on the Reynolds number. Okay, so we uh, we have tested this formula as error indicator. So we consider that given uh, a velocity field that can be coming from the either the full order method or the reduced order method, uh, we compare its energy spectrum with this k to the minus five thirds. So we fit the best constant here. So that's why we get the minimum here, okay? And then we consider that this minimum is how far is the energy spectrum for this tentative if you want solution with respect to the theoretical Kolmogorov spectrum. And we take that, this is in the inertial, inertial part of the spectrum that should be determined for each case. No? So uh, we consider that it is an error, not an error uh, measure really, but an error indicator, okay? Because that can be, many velocity functions that have the same uh, spectrum without necessarily being good solutions. Okay, so considering this, we have performed some tests for uh, well-designed, let's say, the cases to see how good is this error indicator to build uh, a reduced basis approximation, okay? Uh, there is an, a remark is that you can, uh, from the, Simply from the equations, you can decompose the velocity uh, or even the pressure as a sum of large and small scales. And then you can write a problem for the large scales. And then you will have on your right-hand side, the residual for the small scales. So at the end, you can consider that the large scales are uh, driven by the small one. So if you make a good approximation of the small ones, you will have a good approximation of the, of the large ones. Of course, whenever you have a stable numerical method, okay? There is also a nice uh, property of this, uh, if you want error estimator, is that normally, as you have seen, uh, if you want to build an error estimator, you need to perform a numerical analysis to, to build a posteriori error estimators, which is very, very strongly dependent on the kind of numerical technique that you use, okay? So if you change, in this case, uh, LPS, the discretization of the pressure, by some, uh, say, mixed, uh, approximation, the error analysis will, will change, okay? But uh, with this error indicator, I mean, any any kind of approximation that you can make for of your Navier-Stokes equations would be valid, val uh, valid, okay? So we have considered to the problem initially, okay? Uh, we considered a periodic flow for Reynolds between 1,000 and 16,000. In this case, we have considered uh, uh, mixed stable discretization, the Kern Nicholson scheme in time, okay? And uh, we have a cell that we reach nearly an initial spectrum by the physical time nearly 20, okay? So in here we have the spectrum. So these are the large scales. This part is close to this K minus five thirds with the red line. And this is the part in which the viscosity take place uh, which is out also from the energy spectrum. And this is uh, the models of the velocity to, to see uh, how the, the velocity is somehow. This is a purely theoretical velocity, which has not really physical meaning, okay? 
So in here we have a comparison of how the uh, what we do in this case is that after any uh, step in the greedy algorithm in which we add a new Reynolds, we compute all the time snapshots. We uh, add all these uh, time snapshots to all the preceding time uh, snapshots, and we perform a POD analysis. Okay, and then we build our new reduced basis. Okay, so we see here the number of iterations we have. So we get at the fourth iteration, we again get the same value as for the second one. Okay, this is the number of basis functions. This is the evolution of this error indicator, which is uh, decreasing slightly. And this is the, the reduction that this slight reduction of the error indicator produces on the error between the velocity reduced, the reduced velocity and the, and the full order velocity. So we see that a slight reduction of this delta M produces a big, I mean, a reduction of the, of the true error, okay? And so in here we compare with the same greedy algorithm in which instead of using this error indicator, we use the true error. Of course, we have to compute the full order solution, but it is just to compare the, the, the behavior of both, okay? So we can see that for this third iteration, okay, using this error indicator, we get an error of six, 10 times 10 to the minus five, and using the exact one, we get 3.5, 10, 10 to the minus five. So we are not really very far, okay? And as I say, computing this error indicator is very, I mean, it's few costly and it applies to any discretization. So to avoid this stagnation property, we have improved the method. And when we arrive to a stagnation, I mean, the point is that we cannot expect that our uh, reduced solution has a, a full, uh, spectrum in k to the minus five, five thirds, but we can expect that the, the, the spectrum of the reduced solution approaches the spectrum of the finite element full order solution. Okay, so in here we consider that uh, the the uh, the error indicator in the preceding one preceding step is similar, if you want, uh, to the uh, finite element one. So we are me measuring in this way how far we are from the error due to uh, the finite element uh, approximation with respect to the Reynolds. And then we extract in here the maximum Reynolds in which this difference is reached, okay? So in this way, we can continue with the algorithm, okay? And then we can further reduce the errors. In here, we have the L2 uh, norm with respect to the parameter of the H1 norm of the error, okay? So we can reduce reduce further, reduce the, the errors, okay? And we have also a stagnation effect okay, in which even the error increases a little bit, uh, but really this is, these are, um, sorry, these are uh, normalized errors. So this is really uh, a very small one, okay? This is the decreased history of the error in the the algorithm, okay? So we see that really we have a nearly uh, exponential decrease with respect to the number of steps in the greedy algorithm, okay? And in here, uh, so we have, these are the values of the error indicators at any step of the greedy algorithm. So for instance, this score is the first step of the greedy algorithm. This one is the second one. And as I say, what we can expect is that uh, if the procedure converges, we approximate the error indicator corresponding to the full order solution, not to zero, okay? Because the full order solution is not fully an spectrum, has not fully an spectrum in K to the minus four thirds. The point is that we really approximate, you see, the, the indicator for the full order solution when the greedy algorithm steps forward, okay? And these are the errors reached by each uh, iteration in the greedy algorithm. So this is the first, second, third, and so on. And we see that we arrive to errors below almost everywhere, 10 to the minus fourth in, in uh, normalized terms. And so these are relative errors, okay? So as, as conclusions, okay? So uh, there are several ways to to stabilize the pressure discretization in reduce order models, okay? So we have pressure recovery, we have enrichment by uh, supermisers, 
or we have a stabilization. Okay. And uh, what concerns uh, the research that we present in here is that using LPS pressure stabilization provides a reduced order, a reduced base technique that enhances the the reduction, the time computation reduction with similar error levels. Okay. And in what concerns this uh, error indicator based upon the Kolmogorov's uh, turbulence theory, we are obtaining what I consider very promising results for two periodic flows. So now we want to step to 3D problems and see what happens. Okay. So this research has been motivated by the application to uh, the reduced order modeling of air flow in wind farms, okay, which is a problem set by the ARIA the European Union project that we work in the University of Sevilla in collaboration with EI Fluids, in particular with Federico Roman, and in Valorem SAS, a company in Bordeaux in France, in particular with Simon Brie. Okay, so thank you very much. But these are some, some references. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your detailed and informative talks. And I think for now we can move the question session. And uh, is there any question from audience? Please just um, unmute yourself and go ahead. I can I can start with the with the question if if that's that's possible. So this, that was a very nice talk. Quite a, a quite a, a, a few things, so I, I just want to understand. To, to, to so you talked about pressure. So this is more of a clarification and a and a question actually. So um, you talked about pressure stabilization at the beginning, but then you also mentioned um, uh, I, I, the Smagorinsky model. Yeah. So stab so stabilization at the convection. You know, for convection dump. So. It, do you have, can you make any comments about like, uh, is one more important than the, so like qualitative, I know that's hard, but is one more important than the other or should you use them both at the same time or what's your well, you no, know, These feeling? are independent, you... independent subjects, okay? Right. So, I mean, I have uh, added the last subject because we recently obtained uh, what I consider nice results and I want to share it, okay? You know, we've been looking for that kind of estimator for a long time. Okay, because at the end is what I say. When you have a, I mean, of course you can you can uh, you can make many kind of reduce or remote. You can do POD. You can get snapshots in a more or less uh, how to say that uh, intuitive way. Okay, but uh, if you want really to have some kind of error indicator, you need to perform a numerical analysis, which is very much linked to the actual numerical discretization. So in this way, we are building a physics based estimator, okay, which can be used independently on the kind of discretization you have. And that, as we are observing, gives a good idea of the error you are making, okay? Of course, it will. I'm sure it will depend on the problem and possibly there are problems in which it won't be uh, useful, but uh, we have to try. Okay. okay, so there are two different things and, you know, so, yeah. so right, okay. Yes, okay, yes, very yes. good, thank you. Any other questions? I might have a quick curiosity if no one else is asking on this final part about the, the error indicator. So if I understand correctly, your parameter uh, is the Reynolds number and you were varying it, um, what was it, from 1,000 to 16,000. Yes. Um, and from your presentation, I can see how the, the Reynolds number uh, would affect that error indicator. But um, what if uh, you were to add uh, a geometrical parameter in there? Would well, the, think, that still work? Yes, I, I, I mean, I can say really, I don't know, but in principle, you can you can also compute the estimator uh, because it, it is how far you are from the uh, theoretical uh, energy spectrum. So it is independent on, on the shape, say. But there is a point is that uh, now in the application we are making to this wind turbine uh, flow, I mean you should you should locate uh, the computation of the spectrum in, in in a place of the flow in a region of the flow in which the energy has had time to recover the equilibrium. Okay, if you go just to the wake or to the bundle layer, it won't work for sure. Okay, so of course I mean if you have a flow in which you have a part of wake 
a part of a bundle layer or some large scale effects, you won't be able to use that indicator. You will need some additional one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Julian, do you have a question? Yes, I have a lot okay. of questions, but I don't want to hog the, the discussion. So I have a clarification. So at the beginning, Thomas, uh, you talked about um, several, a couple of methods. Um, one is based on your paper from Kamami paper from 2022 yes. with Samuele. And the other one you mentioned is uh, Michael Schneier's paper. And yes. so my question is, and then you talked about the LPS method. And yes. my question is, for which methods do you actually need the supervisors? So do you need for any of them? Do you need the supervisor? Do you use the supervisors? Or for some you do, some you don't, or you don't at all? When you use LPS, you don't need the supervisors. Exactly. For the full order method. But for the reduced okay. one, it depends on what kind of uh uh, sorry, element, finite element you have. And uh -huh. essentially, I mean, because we have been able to prove for P1, P1, but mm -hmm. not for P2, P2, how, however it works. Okay. You know, it's okay. something really surprising. I mean, you think, uh, I mean, we have spent, uh, I can say a long time thinking about why it should work. We don't know, but it works. Okay. I don't know. Because you need rich that's enough at the end uh -huh. in, the, in the velocity space in right. some sense. Yes. And also to, to, to prove that you have an, an underlying infinite condition with that additional stabilizing term. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, even proving that it is a normal the due space, we, we don't know how to do it for P2, P2, or P3, 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 and so on. Okay. So, but, but what went, so, so the supervisor, so the infinite condition, um, you, you, you're talking, at the finite element level? So is that what because you say P2P? At the finite element level, it, it is all, all right. This is a well-established theory and you can prove the, the, that it is not only a norm, right. but it's equivalent to the L2, okay? Okay, okay, okay. But you're saying when you go to the ROM space, that's, that's the, that, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, and for the previous two, so that was for the LPS and for the, uh, so the, I forgot the pressure recovery, and yes. uh, so the, and the pressure Poisson equation, do you need the supervisors at the ROM level or not? No, no in this case, because you are multiplying by pressure gradient. So you exactly. have a plus. I mean, okay. I mean, you uh, can have exactly. a place with dimension one, you get a good okay. pressure. I mean, a good okay. stable, stable pressure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. More question from audience? <laughs> Go ahead, Trey. <laughs> well, I'm going to hog the discussion. I don't care. So, so the the scaling parameters for yeah. the so uh, when you talk about LPS. So, how did you get? So, you said that uh, I didn't quite. Maybe I okay, can you explain again? Maybe like a, like Perhaps how do you get the the you scaling? Want to share and show actually where is it? Um, Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, so, well, I, I get the same difficulties. Um, so here, okay. So the point right. is, that, I mean, you can consider, uh, what is it? You get this problem and mm -hmm. you multiply by gradient of Q, okay? Mm -hmm. And you, you don't integrate the parts in here because I mean, right. normally, Unless you have a C1, if you want a pressure yeah. space, okay? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you get this with TOK A uh -huh. equals one, okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the point is that if you want to perform an analysis of this problem with TOK A equals one, you uh -huh. cannot. Because, uh -huh. I mean, this duality pressure gradient uh, convection is mm -hmm. absolutely out of order to, to be mm -hmm. bounded, okay? Mm -hmm. So you multiply by those... Uh, uh -huh. Uh, stabilization coefficients, then you use inverse error estimates, uh -huh. and you are able to bound these guys at the see. error here by the POD error. Okay. I see. I see. Uh, okay. So, and the point is that we have been also working with the stabilized methods for several years, mm -hmm. and we knew that this, uh, this in this way, we can bound the error. I see. Okay. I see. 
So you prove okay. stability and you prove error estimates. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate. It. Very nice talk. Uh, maybe we can wait a couple of minutes again to hear any question from audience. Or even thoughts, maybe. I mean, so if anybody, right, if wants to say, just, yeah. Yeah, I think there is one, Valentin, from here yeah, chatting. Please just unmute yourself and ask your question. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. we hear okay. you. Uh, thank you for the very nice talk. Um, I have a question about the... Um, uh, the variational Smagonsky model. Um, so, uh, uh, well, I have two questions. Uh, first, um, is there a specific um, reason why you use uh, the variational Smagonsky model and not the uh, usual one, if I understood well? And also, you uh, you mentioned that uh, you need, uh, uh, if I understood well, you mentioned that you need a hyper reduction. To, uh, to treat uh, the uh, um, AD viscosity um, to, uh, uh, to have um, uh, efficient computation of the reduced the model. Uh, and uh, do you know if, uh, if uh, uh, is there some, some difference if you use the variational Smagorinsky model or if you use the regular Smagorinsky model for, for the hyper reduction? There are okay, big okay. difference in uh, performance yes, or yes. something like this. The, the nice thing in the in the VMS, if you want version of Smagorinsky model, is that the eddy viscosity only uh, acts on uh, the how to say that the result small scales. Okay, because you filter your velocity field, and then you avoid damping the larger scales. Okay, and, and there is an, an another nice uh, if you want the property is that. This model, which is a single equation, uh, it takes into account three levels, you know? So you have large resolved scales, small resolved scales, and subgrid scales. All the effects of all of them are taken into account by this model, okay? So uh, it is a more accurate, uh, really, for if you get, if you get a, to take that, a trust solution. Yeah? And you get the error, and you compare the error with a standard. If you want a Smagorinsky model, you get smaller errors. But this was made by Hughes and his co-workers when he started to work with the, the VMS techniques in the nineties. Okay. So for the second question, I mean, uh, you really don't need a further if you want a reduction of the eddy viscosity, but it provides uh, and it speed up. If you if you uh, read the, reduce the uh, viscosity because as it is uh, a nonlinear function of the velocity, you can perform, uh, for instance, an empirical interpolation approximation of that uh, function, and then you can compute it in a very fast way in the reduced order procedure. Okay, but actually you don't need it. You will get uh, a reduced order method which a little higher uh, velocity to I mean computation over time. Okay, but you don't have. Um, I thought like the AD viscosity involve um, a norm, not a norm square, so it's non polynomial. So you, the, 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 you cannot the do the point wise, this, the point wise modulus of the gradient of the velocity. Okay, of course, if you have to compute that, it needs some time. Okay, of course, so that's why it is better to reduce that and, and, and write, write it as a linear combination of some basis functions. Okay, very thank good. you. Thanks to you. I do not see any raised hands or anyone just try to unmute themselves. I think that should be fine. I think that we had a, you know, a little bit of discussion and I'm sure. So, I mean, I, it's up to, of course, it's up to Thomas, but I'm sure that if somebody has questions after, you know, after the the talk, you know, I, I'm sure that Thomas will, will, will be glad to maybe address some of those and um, later, later on. 
Okay, then I think uh, we need to just close the session. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your participation. I think it was really good talk and also nice discussions uh, from audience collaboration. Thank you so much. And um, we will see you for next week, let's say. Thanks again. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas.